gases are one of the most pervasive aspects of our environment on the earth. We continually exist with constant exposure to gases of all forms. In a gas, the molecules have a higher kinetic energy than those in the liquid and solid states. However, the cohesive forces, the forces that bind the gas molecules together in a gas are negligible. That is very small and insignificant. This is why the molecules are free to move in all directions at great speed, but only within the walls of the container. Considering the large number of known gases in the world, the task of trying to describe each one of them individually would be an awesome task. In order to simplify this task, the scientific community has decided to create an imaginary gas that approximates the behavior of all real gases. In other words, the ideal gas is a substance that does not exist. The kinetic molecular theory describes the behavior of this ideal gas. The assumptions behind the kinetic theory of gases can be illustrated with the apparatus shown here, which consists of a gas plate surrounded by walls mounted on top of three vibrating motors. A handful of steel ball bearings are placed on top of the glass plate to represent the gas particles. When the motors are turned on, the glass plate vibrates, which makes the ball bearings move in a constant, random fashion. Each ball moves in a straight line until it collides with another ball and also with the walls of the container. Although collisions are frequent, the average distance between the ball bearings is much larger than the diameter of the balls. There is no force of attraction between the individual ball bearings or between the ball bearings and the walls of the container. The collisions that occur in this apparatus are very different from those that occur when a rubber ball is dropped on the floor. Collisions between the rubber ball and the floor are inelastic, as shown in this illustration. A portion of the energy of the ball is lost each time it hits the floor, until it eventually rolls to a stop. In this apparatus, the collisions are perfectly elastic. The ball bearings have just as much energy before and after a collision. At any time, some of the ball bearings on this apparatus are moving faster than others. But the system can be described by an average kinetic energy. When we increase the temperature of the system by increasing the voltage to the motors, we find that the average kinetic energy of the ball bearings increases. In the kinetic theory of gases, certain assumptions have been made in order to simplify the description of the physical behavior of gases in a closed system. Different laws and equations have been formulated based on the behavioral changes that are associated with gases when they are subjected to certain conditions. Some of these laws include Boyle's law, Charles' law, Gay-Lussac's law, Avogadro's law, combined gas law, ideal gas law, Dalton's law, and Graham's law. All of the above gas laws 
I used to explain the physical behavior of gases mathematically. Let's look at Boyle's law. Boyle's law states that the volume V of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure P, provided that its temperature T and the amount of gas N remain unchanged. This could be illustrated using the kinetic theory of gases. If the volume of a container is reduced, while the temperature and the amount of gas remains unchanged, the total surface area of the container on which the gas particles will be colliding on will also be reduced, and this will increase the pressure P. According to Boyle's law, the volume of a gas decreases as the pressure applied to it increases. If its pressure is decreased, its volume will increase. Of course, this will happen only if its absolute temperature and its amount in moles remain unchanged. Mathematically, Boyle's law is expressed as follows. In Boyle's law, when the graph of P, the pressure of the gas, is plotted against V, the volume of the gas, the graph forms a curve approaching the horizontal and vertical axis. However, when P, the pressure of the gas, is plotted against 1 over V, the reciprocal of the volume of the gas, a straight line graph is obtained. The combined gas law is simply a combination of Boyle's law, Charles' law, Gay-Lussac's law, and Avogadro's law. In this general equation, temperature T, pressure P, volume V, and amount of moles N are taken into consideration. Unlike Boyle's law, Charles' law shows the relationship between the volume V and the absolute temperature T. Charles' law states that the volume V of a given mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature T, provided that its pressure P and the amount of gas N remain unchanged. Let us consider a given mass of a gas confined within a vessel with a movable piston. If the gas is heated, the temperature of the gas will rise and the gas molecules will acquire more kinetic energy, move faster and collide more often with the walls of the container, thereby increasing the pressure that they exert on the walls of the container in which they are in. This will lead to an increase in the volume of the gas. According to Charles' law, the volume V of a gas increases as its absolute temperature T is being raised. If its absolute temperature T is being lowered, its volume V will consequently decrease. Again, this can only happen if the pressure P of the gas and its amount N remain unchanged. Mathematically, Charles' law is expressed as follows. This is an example of the graph of the volume V of a gas plotted against its temperature T at constant pressure P and amount N. Notice that the graph is a straight line with a positive gradient or slope. Gases can be described in terms of four variables. Pressure P, volume V, temperature T, and the amount of gas N. There are five relationships between pairs of these variables in which two of the variables are allowed to change while the other two are held constant. Each of these relationships is a special case of a more general relationship known as the ideal gas equation. PV equals NRT. 
In this equation, R is a proportionality constant known as the ideal gas constant and T is the absolute temperature. The value of R depends on the units used to express the four variables P, V, N, and T. By convention, most chemists use the following set of units. Gay-Lussac's law states that the pressure, P, of a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature, T, provided that its volume, V, and the amount of gas, N, remain constant. Consider a given mass of a gas that is confined in a vessel with an immovable piston. If heat is being applied to the gas, the temperature of the gas will rise, and this will result in an increase in the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules. Consequently, the gas particle will move faster and collide more often with the walls of the container, increasing the force that is being exerted on the walls of the container. According to Gay-Lussac's law, if the absolute temperature of a gas is raised, its pressure is going to increase. If its absolute temperature is reduced, its pressure is going to be reduced. Again, this can only take place if its volume and amount in moles remain constant. Mathematically, this relationship can be represented as follows. John Dalton was the first to recognize that the total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the contributions of the individual components of the mixture. By convention, the part of the total pressure of a mixture that results from one component is called the partial pressure of that component. Dalton's law of partial pressures states that the total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the partial pressures of the various components. Pt equals P1 plus P2 plus P3 and so on. Air, for example, is composed primarily of nitrogen and oxygen. In a given sample of air, the total number of moles can be approximated as N equals N nitrogen plus N oxygen. This expression for N can be substituted into the ideal gas law to yield the following equation. PV equals N nitrogen plus N oxygen multiply by RT. All molecules in the gas have access to the entire volume of the system. Thus, V is the same for both nitrogen and oxygen. Similarly, both compounds experience the same temperature. One can therefore split this expression of the ideal gas law into two terms one for nitrogen and one for oxygen. P equals N nitrogen RT divided by V plus N oxygen RT divided by V. And P equals P nitrogen plus P oxygen.